All right, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Daniel Schiffer and I had a really interesting, well, cool experience in getting the opportunity to make a video with Peter McKinnon. Today's video is gonna be me showing you that video we made together. It's also on his channel with a full behind the scenes. Today on my channel, we're gonna be breaking down some of the transitions and showing you the thought process and how we film and edit those types of things. But I just quickly wanted to say that Peter McKinnon is one of the people that has been a huge role model for myself over the past three years. I don't feel like I would be here right now making videos like this if it weren't for him pioneering the photography and filmmaking tutorial genre here on YouTube. Peter is so much more than just a YouTube personality. The guy is extremely talented. He's extremely down to earth and just a pleasure to work with. So the whole experience was just fantastic and I'm excited to be sharing this with you. And uh, I guess I'll just stop talking now and show you the video and get right into some cool transitions. Hello and welcome to Monday. Now on the drive-in, it's a very special day because I realized I haven't had coffee today and then it hit me not once, not one time, not once have I ever made coffee in this office, which is insane to me because you'd think that I'd be making it like every single day. So that's gonna change and that's gonna change today in the most epic fashion possible. Also, how sick does this cage look right now, right? Like it is looking mint, but not as mint as the B-roll that's starting right now. All right, so that little coffee sequence was a lot of fun to film, so I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Keep in mind that on my channel, I've already got a whole bunch of those editing breakdowns and tutorials from past B-roll sequences that go into those finer details of how I actually step-by-step -step assemble a sequence like this. What I'll be doing for this video is going through it with you frame by frame, talking a bit about the thought process and how we edited together the clips to get those smooth, seamless transitions. And the goal is that hopefully after I go through this, you can go out and try some of these techniques on your own and it will all become a little bit less intimidating. All right, so the video of course opens up with the clip of Peter in his gear cage. He's vlogging, talking about how he hasn't made coffee yet in his new office. And if we play this through, you'll notice that the clip ends off with the camera going in towards his shirt. Now, the important thing to note here is that the shirt fills the whole frame, making the screen black. And if we continue to click through, you will notice that our next clip starts top down over a black countertop. I follow the drawer out from the countertop where it reveals the scale inside the drawer. Peter picks up the scale out of the drawer. I follow the drawer back into the countertop and then again, the black fills the frame. Now on this next clip that I'm about to show you, I actually used the front of the countertop, which is also black, using it to fill the frame and then coming up with a twisting motion with the camera, trying to keep the action with the lid of the grinder in the center of the frame. He flips it around a couple of times using those sleight of hand movements that we know Peter for when it comes to his card tricks and things like that. He places the lid down and then he reaches over for the coffee beans. At this point, I start punching in and post using keyframes. I scale into about, I don't know, like 150%. And just as he catches the bottle, the clip actually switches to a new clip which is this clip here. Now, at first, when I go back and forth, they look like two separate clips, of course, because they are. But if we play this through slowly, it actually does look like one seamless clip. And that all has to do with the timing. So there is some speed ramping going on. Both of the clips happen quite fast. There's a bit of motion blur. The way the camera is moving from top to down is very similar in both clips. But I also made sure to keyframe the end of this first clip to line up with the second clip so that they would flow seamlessly. Now the jar full of beans smashes down, the cork bounces by, the beans are flowing out. And here you can see I actually keyframed in a pan left transition with a lot of motion 
tumbler, which leads us into our next clip, which is also starting with a pan left transition. Here, Peter is scooping the beans with his hands into that lid and then he places it on the scale. Now this is a really interesting transition because it feels seamless, yet it's just a hard cut. There's really no magic going on here. He places it down and keep an eye on his hand over here. Watch as it moves right in the frame. And then in this next clip, as he spins the lid, his hand continues moving right. So let's play that back one more time. Hand moving right, hand moving right in both shots. So that spins around a couple of times and then it does a zoom out transition with motion blur into the next shot where he's pouring the beans into the grinder. The clip zooms out, the beans are going in in slow motion, the camera's articulating, orbiting around the grinder, and then it starts to speed up with the speed ramp while I simultaneously zoom back in. And this is a moment where a lot of people might say that zoom in transitions are overused, but this is a scenario where I think it actually works because we are effectively zooming into what the next shot is, which is a close-up of the beans inside the grinder. So we zoom in here again with a bunch of motion blur to hide that cut. It zooms in, there's the beans grinding, and then this leads us into our next shot, which is another pan left transition with motion blur into the grounds coming into the bottom of the grinder where they're stored. Zooms in slowly here, another pan left transition. You can see that I really like to use these transitions in post because sometimes you can't always plan your transitions in camera. You just have to focus on getting the action, especially if it's a run and gun shoot. And then you just kind of have to deal with what you've got in post and make it work. So a lot of motion blur, a lot of key framing the position in post to pan one way or another, zooming in, zooming out. In this case, we panned left from this shot into this shot. And it makes sense because here Peter is actually pulling the filter out of the bag in the same direction as the previous shot panned. He pulls the filter out and again, just a hard cut that you can tell is very clearly two different clips. But when it is played back in a fluid motion, it almost looks like one clip. So you can see here he pulls the filter out and flicks the filter in the air. Now one thing I want to point out is that in order to make these clips flow a little bit more seamlessly, keep an eye on the bag of filters here. As we get into the next shot, I actually masked in and kept the bag of filters in the next shot with a very heavy feathering, making sure that it's not too out of place. I also lowered the opacity a little bit to make it blend in, and it only lasts for about one frame. On the second frame, it's really faded, and on the third, it's completely gone. So we'll play that again. You can see the bag of filters here and it's gone. But it does last for a couple of seconds in that next frame. Otherwise, the cut just seems very harsh. Filter is floating through the air in slow motion. It speeds up with a speed ramp and lands perfectly into the Chemex. I believe that's a Chemex. Bringing us into our next shot of the grounds being poured in the top of the filter. Now, these two shots were actually quite challenging to link together because in the first shot, we have a downward motion. And of course, in the next shot, it's more of an upward motion. These two movements, completely clash with each other and don't make for a seamless cut, which is exactly why I decided to use that film burn overlay where it comes in and covers the frame, hiding that cut, and I felt like this was a suitable time to use such an effect. Otherwise, the two clips cut together just looked very out of place. So Peter shakes in the grounds in slow motion into the top of the filter, and then it does speed up using a speed ramp, and we get some motion blur here with another speed ramp leading into our second shot. I have a whole video about speed ramping that will also be linked down in the description below if you don't know what I'm talking about. So here's just that classic slow motion pour into the Chemex, getting those bubbles flowing, making sure that the coffee is starting to drip through the filter. Definitely a must have shot for a Chemex coffee sequence. And then that speed ramps into this shot. So those last couple of transitions are basically identical. We have another speed ramp with motion blur, this time moving to the right. And we do have this slow motion droplet shot in the bottom of the Chemex. This was actually a tough one to get because of all that steam and condensation on the Chemex, on the glass. It was very hard to see where those drips were in focus. So I don't even think it is completely in focus, but it still looks kind of cool. You do have some of these condensation bubbles on the back of the Chemex in focus, which works for me. Here we have another pan left transition with motion blur. Again, the next shot begins with a movement to the left of the frame with this mug floating through the air. Catches it with his right hand, 
places it on the table, and here we have a keyframe of position up into the next shot where he's swishing around the Chemex with the coffee inside. And in this moment, I kind of wanted to tie everything together and not make the ending too distracting as we wrap up the sequence. We just have a nice hard cut from one shot to another. There's no issue using a hard cut in your videos. I don't think you should stray away from it. It's just in a sequence like this where there's so many smooth and flowy, seamless transitions, sometimes a hard cut looks out of place, but in this instance, because it's near the end of the video, I think it worked just fine. So here we have the slow motion of the coffee pouring into the mug, and then it of course ends with Peter's face as he takes a sip of that fresh Chemex coffee. And that's the video. So there isn't a whole lot going on in terms of transitions. A lot of it is going into the same color in both shots, whether that's ending in black and then starting the next shot in black. We have a lot of those post added camera movements where we pan left or pan right, tilt up, tilt down, zoom in, zoom out. All of those things can be added in post. And then we of course had a couple of those transitions, the one with the coffee beans in the jar where he flips it, catches it, it cuts to a new shot and he smashes it down on the table and we used a similar transition for the filter throwing in the air. He takes it out of the bag, cuts to a completely different shot where he's throwing the filter. Both of these transitions are just hard cuts, but because the clips and the actions in the clips kind of line up and have the same sort of movement, you can use a hard cut and it will still look seamless. And apart from that, there's of course a few speed ramps and some regular hard cuts. Now, one aspect of smooth transitions and linking shots that I think goes very under the radar is sound effects. I think a lot of the time people think that sound effects and sound design is just to add a cinematic element to your videos to make the action Actions in the video stand out, but it is actually a really useful tool to bring one shot into another. Whether that's a whoosh or starting a sound effect a little bit early, or maybe cutting a sound effect a little bit late as it leads into the next clip, there's all sorts of things you can do with sound to help enhance those transitions and tie your clips together just a little bit better. This is what the video looks like with no music and just sound effects. But that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer and don't forget to check out Peter's behind the scenes of that B-roll sequence and I will see you guys in the next video. Hello and welcome to Monday. Now on the drive in, it's a very special day because I realized I haven't had coffee today and then it hit me not once, not one time, not once. Have I ever made coffee in this office? Which is insane to me because you think that I'd be making it like every single day. So that's gonna change and that's gonna change today in the most epic fashion possible. Also, how sick does this cage look right now, right? Like it is looking mint, but not as mint as the B-roll that's starting right now.